Y'all ready for this? No, 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 no. Okay, are you ready? Hi, guys. I am drinking tequila. And chocolate milk. <laughs> In his blender bottle. Cheers. Oh, it's been a minute, right? Chevy Rail here. If there's anybody new, I'll put the little eye of an introduction video. I'm guessing that most of you know who I am. And this is Jan, sans beard, which a lot of you have probably already seen that as well. This is an actual episode, a for real one. The last couple have been not for real ones. I will tell you, we're gonna start out with a couple little stories. So I'll put a timestamp when it gets to the knitting for those of you who don't give a shit about this f***ing bird. <sighs> so we had a little incident. Those would be the remnants of four of my grandma's teacups. You know, my grandma's teacups that she started collecting when she was 16, that some are over 100 years old. Yeah, those, those teacups. For those of you who are not on Instagram or who missed my Instagram stories, we don't, we don't need anything from the peanut gallery. This is going well. <laughs> so I walk in the house the other day and the way our house is, I come in through the garage and the table is in front of our bay window. And my bay window, I have like all these succulents and incense burners and crystals and a couple of hand pottery things. One was a mug that my friend Rebecca made me. Human skulls. We don't have human skulls. There may be some questionable, no, there's no bones or anything there. No. It's like this little oasis that I love, right? But the table's in front of it. So I walk in and all of a sudden Dan pops up from behind the table like he was on the ground holding all these pieces of the mug that Rebecca made me. Looking guilty as hell. It was only holding one piece. Oh, I thought you had all the pieces mm -hmm. you picked up. Mm -hmm. So he looked totally guilty and I was like, what did you do? And he was like, I didn't do anything. It's like I was trying to figure out how Ditto did it. Cause you know, Ditto gets blamed for everything. Well, it got knocked off. So the bay window, there's a seat and then there's a shelf up top that Dan built me. I'll see if I can put a picture in. The mug, I was using the mug as, uh, it was holding my incense sticks, some of my incense sticks, and it was on the top shelf. That fell, a plant fell, and when the plant fell, oh, we can't be having this. And when the plant fell, all the dirt went all like all in our blinds. It was an absolute mess. So he's like, I'm sitting here trying to figure out how Ditto did that. Because every once in a while, Ditto will see something out the window and like jump up on the bench part and we yell at him. Yeah, but not all the way up on the shelf. Yeah, like there's no way that he could have gotten up there. So then I guess you take it over because you kind of started telling me what was after that. Well, I walked in, so I pulled in and both the dogs were barking, which is weird. Uh, Thank God Ditto is crated during the day <laughs> or this would have been so much worse. Both the dogs are barking. I come in, I let them out. Uh, I hear something that sounds like him scratching on the outside of the wall by the bedroom. Not choking weird. him, I swear. He's like... <laughs> so I heard a noise. I was like, no, that's crazy. Heard another noise. Was walking to the front of the, the house to see what the noise was and got into the, well, the hallway that comes to the junk room. It's a stuff room. We don't call it junk room. This is not junk. Oh, it's not hoarding if your shit is cool. Right? Anyway, so a bird These are had family come in, heirlooms, damn it. Presumably through the fireplace uh, and was flying around in the room. It had been out in the kitchen, knocked hold all on, the plants hold and on. stuff off. Pause. Okay, continue, I'm sorry. Ditto was on my nerves. Uh, yeah, knocked all that stuff off, knocked my camera off of one of the cameras off the cabinet and pooped on those blinds. Shit everywhere. Knocked all the spices off. Um, just pain in the ass. You and didn't tell me about the spices. In the stuff, yeah, half the spices were laying in this thing. And then came in here and 
at some point in time. Uh, 153 was when it knocked the camera off. And we found it at, I got here 4.30ish. So it had been running the house for hours. A bird in the house. Can If Ditto was out of his crate, it would have been so much worse. But it busted four of my grandma's teacups and this little, hold on, I'll show you. I see three. One, two. Oh, it is just three. Yeah. It is three. And let me just tell you why it's three. That's it would have been four of my grandma Nada's teacups. But the one fell in a basket of fiber, no joke. <laughs> yeah. My my basket of hand spun on it. Ow. Careful. I mean, he is so high maintenance. Like, why can't you just be a normal dog, dude? Okay, so this is gonna be hard to see, but I've had this teacup, it was made in Japan, teacup, tea set, since I was probably born, you guys. There's a little creamer, whoops. Drop and break another. There's a little creamer, there's a little sugar thing, there's a little teapot, it busted two of my cups. I mean, and here's the kicker. I was allowed to play with this thing when I was little, like twice, and it lived in the plastic case that it came in until like four months ago when my mom gave it to me and I put it in the stuff room. So and for 39 it. years, this thing has lived just fine and this damn bird came in, which what are you gonna do, dude? So that's basically the story. Oh, and I have two plants in here. It knocked over a couple of my succulents in here and there was dirt everywhere. It was not any fun. But that's it? Nothing now, in the living room? Yeah, yeah, it was just the front room and the kitchen. Now you might wonder how a bird got into our house. I doubt it, I think they all know. The flue was open on the chimney. Yep. And Dan claims ah. that there is, like he's been up on the roof, he just like actually put shingles back on that had blown off in a storm and said that he looked and he can't figure out how they're getting in. This is the second one we've had. Now, third. third. Well, fourth. There Did I two. not know? Oh, there were, there were two. two dead ones when we bought the house. I didn't really count those, but we'll have to make sure that the flu always stays closed. Now, the first time it happened, Clint was here and I made a video. I highly doubt that Clint will let me post it. Oh, I on, thought you did. On the YouTubes. No, I edited, oh. I edited it. It happened last year. I've sent it to a couple people privately. It was pretty good. Dude, we didn't know what it was. And it did not sound like a bird. It sounded like something clawing, I swear. There's like, a raccoon stuck in the chimney. I thought it was a squirrel or a chipmunk. I didn't say raccoon. So that's the debacle that we went through this week. Now. I do have all those pieces. My grandma Nada, a lot of the cups have already been glued together. I kept them because they were her cups. They've been glued together like from forever ago. I'm not really one to glue pieces together. I Once it's broken, it's broken is the way I see it. I thought about gluing my little teacups back together just because I'm displaying this, but I think I think I threw some of the pieces away. I don't know. Anyway, I'm not one to glue things back together. But talking about gluing things back together, I do want to share, there is actually, what is it? A, a Japanese mm. tradition Q, or Q Japanese? Notes. Centuries old art of repairing broken pottery with gold. Okay, show them whatever that word is. But isn't that cool? So when pottery breaks, they glue it back together, but there's a gold vein. And then there's a story behind like why they do it and I forget what it, has it is. It has to be true. It's on Wikipedia. Oh, whatever. But I, I just kind of thought that was cool. I mean, I'm not going to be gluing anything back together with gold. And I just got all those gold bars out of the safe for you too. All our gold bars. Not which, all of them. Dan at first thought maybe there was a robber in the house. Oh, when I was, yeah, because it was a weird noise. I was like, but I got halfway back here into a dark house by myself and thought, oh crap, what if it's a person? <laughs> <laughs> okay, the second story is going to be quicker because here again, most of you already know, baby Cole came and that is why it's been a minute since I've recorded. Of course, I took all of this knitting to the hospital thinking I- Not home, I, here home. A different home. Home Ohio home. Dan Lots hates it when I say that. 
Because nobody knows. I still say when I go home because home is in Ohio, but and my where house. Where do you go when you're when you leave home? Sometimes I leave home to go home. Right. But there are people on the planet who speak Chevis. I swear. Like when I say that, they know what I'm talking about. Dan just likes give me shit. I do. Mm hmm. I did do a video on Baby Cole. If you want to see that, I'll tag it. So now, I guess this is where I'll mark the timestamp. Let's get on to the stuff. Insert time here. And. <laughs> you guys, I have been a sewing machine since you've seen me. It's all I want. Well, not. I thought your sewing machine was broken. No, it's not broken. My sewing machine is an old bitch. She's like from the 70s. She's a Kenmore. She weighs Seriously. like 30 pounds. But she's a workhorse, yo. Mm -hmm. And she does just fine. I don't need them fancy stitches that y'all have with your little, like, push the button and does everything for, for you. Yeah, no. Your, your grandpa eyebrow hair is, like, so on my nerves right now. Yeah, no, that won't help. That's the definition of a grandpa eyebrow hair. Is it goes like this, no matter what you do. <laughs> I have two evil eyebrows. Actually, you have these. You have two, and they're doing this. We'll get those later. I'm sure we will. <laughs> okay, so, Hit. so, 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 so liberated is what we're sewing. You guys know that I made one metamorphic dress. I made two metamorphic dresses. <clears throat> Whoa. Oh, that's not what they came to see. See the abuse I have to take? It's terrible. Okay, I did not even wear this today. I just put it on so you guys could see it. But this is with my linen. So the first time I, d I made a muslin out of the cheapy stuff, but this is my actual linen. Now, I've already had a blowout that I have to fix. Hmm. It's not because it doesn't fit. It's just... I. I did not, I need to backstitch. That was my own fault. It'll be, it's an easy fix though. So some of you've probably already seen this on Instagram. This is reversible. And on the other side, it has the like, these kind of pockets. If you get, catch my meaning. And then on the, this side, you have the apron pockets. My next FO is the muslin for my Forester. Now, if you guys remember the picture, I'll put it over Dan's face, that I fell in love with this. Uh, Meg from So Liberated was wearing this entire outfit and I loved it. I will eventually make this in not muslin, but it's an open face vest. It has these big, huge pockets. Okay. You guys know I'm not a sewer. If any of y'all followed Rebecca from Mean Girls and I's back and forth on these sewing the of the what, things. Third thing you've made in the last well, couple weeks. Not a sewer at all. I'm not any good. I just seriously fly by the seat of my pants, folks. I thought you had a broomstick. I do have a broomstick. And I'm going to stick in your ear if you don't be nice to me. There's some firsts here with this. First off, there's this... Thing. I think they I think they call it a box pleat. Can they see it? Mm -hmm. I've never done one of those. Now, thankfully, while I am not a sewer of things, like as far as it coming naturally to me, <sighs> as far as it coming naturally to me, I have to try really hard. Just like backstory. <laughs> Any of you who are familiar with pits, that's that's a total pity, pity noise, because he wants attention. Pity noise? <clears throat> Should we take pity on you? <sighs> okay, I was a person that, like, I graduated from college with honors, but I had to study really hard. Please go away. You are making this not fun. I feel like that's the same with sewing. It doesn't come naturally. I have to read and read and reread and I sew things together and I'm like, crap, that was on the wrong side and I have to pick it out and it's not, like knitting I can knit 100 mile an hour and not look. Sewing, very different. Luckily, I have 
a, a friend named Tara who is like smart when it comes to sewing. C. Where Today's did he... episode brought to you by the letter yeah. C. Where'd you even get that, dude? I don't know, but there's He's a He's so high well. maintenance. Hot Mass Express. Cool. He'll find it here shortly. Okay, I am warm. It's either the lights or the tequila or all the layers of clothes I have on. The lights are fluorescent, so it ain't those. Okay. It could be the fact that he has four shirts on. Listen, my friend Tara is a sewer of things, and so is her mom. So whenever I have a question, I, I will text her and be like, hey, can you look at this for me? On this, for example, and I'm going to tell you, in case you would like to sew something and do the same thing that I did, you can learn from my mistake. See this? See how this lays nice and flat? But this is doing that flippy thing. I have a shirt that does that. Okay, can so I can... My shirt? No, I can lay it down, but as soon as you move, it just goes right back. I was talking to Tara about it, and I think after discussing it, I think I was pulling, is it the, is it binding, bit facing, whatever you call the piece that you make the edge with. I was pulling that tighter, like as I was sewing it and it stretched the fabric and is causing that ripple. She said to get it to not do that, you put in a lot of pins which I never put a lot of pins in. I like, I pin it so far and then I'm like, eh, it's good. I can just hold it the rest of the way. <laughs> so go figure this happened. But now I know like to be conscious of not stretching it and use a lot of pins and hopefully this will not happen. Also the, and this is, are sewing patterns different? I'm what people are always scared of like giving, giving away the secret sauce. But this is not. The entire mm -hmm. thing. Hmm. Give it away what? The secret sauce. Okay. The sauce. The sauce. These patterns are done with a 5 8 seam allowance. Things that I have knit, I'm not a, I knit, sewn. I have sewn things, right? I haven't followed a whole lot of patterns, but I feel like the patterns that I have followed the seam allowance has been less than 5 8 inch. It seemed big to me, but all of, all of these are 5 8 inch. So I wondered if maybe it was like a clothes thing. I'm going to pick this out and redo it. Like I don't like this big of a seam allowance, so I think I'm gonna try a quarter inch and she said that would probably be fine. So I'm gonna try it again, see how it works out. If I like it, I'll make it in my linen fabric, which was the whole point of this outfit. I am so hot, I have to take these layers off. <sighs> oh, uh, next was... one. Hold on, I don't know if, yeah, yeah, mending matters. Oh, you guys remember my mending? That book, do you guys remember? Okay, so looks really cool, right? Not fun. This well, not fun. Buying intentionally paying full price for jeans full of holes specifically so that you can bring them home and mend them? Or the actual mending? The actual mending. No, I was fine with the it. Buying broken jeans is okay. I was fine. So many people made a comment about how I made I bought jeans with holes in them just to mend them. Which I know I'm crazy. Like, hello, this is not new, correct? So this I put the same I, I use this material for the hole. And I did the mending and I think it looks really cool, right? But it it's hard because it's a leg. Like you, uh, I don't know how much more of it I'm gonna do. One more thing about this dress. I love the fit. I'm a size 12. It's meant to have positive ease. I would not go down a size. I made the size 12, I'm a size 12. I would not go down a size. So like you want, your bust is the most important, right? So see, there's that much positive ease or whatever. This is the only thing I don't really care for about it. Like that, I feel like there's a whole lot, like wherever it sits on my shoulders, I get this thing. So if I ever made another one, like if I what pull it, do? uh, I don't know. If I pull it out, I feel like the like my shoulders aren't as wide or something. Uh, if I pull it out, then it doesn't do it, right? Now you just look like a football player. Right, like that's not where my shoulders sit. 
So for where my shoulders sit, I get this thing, and I'm. So put one of those pockety things in it. A pockety thing. The thing in the back of the other shirt, the vest. A box pleat? Those sure. go on the back. <laughs> yeah, just fold it over and sew it. I mean, they have apron. They have apron tops that do that, I think. Yeah. But oh. not with this one, cause they're no, no. Cut a V in it. I would rather cut the bodice to like. There, there has to be a way to to fix that. I'm just not a good enough sewer to do that, like by myself. And I still love this dress, and I'm gonna wear it. It's super comfortable. I love the linen, so it's a I do, win. We live in Amish country. It's a win, but there's some things that I would tweak if doing again. What's next on the list? The sweetest sleeper, which is hard to say. The sweetest sleeper. Oh, Simply right. Sycamore. The sweetest sleeper by Simply Sycamore. That's okay. Tough. I know what you guys are saying. You're like, Chevis. That's silly. You already knit that. Yes, I did. For baby Cole. But Clinny's sister, Christy, is having a baby. And when we went to YarnCon, he picked up some yarn for me to make one from him to his sister for her baby. I did not show this on my YarnCon haul, but this is the Grinning Gargoyle. This is a single DK 801010 alpaca silk cashmere. We got two skeins just in case. It was in the sale bin, and I think the reason it was in the sale bin, I'll just show you why I think, which doesn't really matter. First off, here is the sleeper. Isn't it cute? Those are either his, his grandma's, I think they're Grandma Julie's buttons. I could be wrong, they might be his mom's, but I was thinking they were Grandma Julie's buttons. Hey, hey, hey. Um, see, I'm trying to find it and it's even hard to, oh, th there. See that little spot of it's red? I don't even know if you can see it. There's a burgundy drip. Now that it's knit up, you can't even, only I know it's there, I guess, right there, see it? Yeah, barely whatever, right? So I just need to put one of my little tags on it. What's next? Easy peasy newborn sock hat, Carrie McKiernan? Yes, easy peasy newborn sock hat by Carrie McKe McKeeran. This is to Christy, who is Clint's sister from me. Look, it looks like a little umbilical cord. Isn't it cute? This is a free pattern. If you guys remind... It looks like a knot on the top of a hat. There, I think there is a pattern called the umbilical cord hat. This is not it, but it, it has that same... Or like belly button when you cut like a, the umbilical cord. They know, they know, because a bunch of them have real human offspring. They've spawned humans. That's, that's a thing. They know. This yarn is Malabrigo in the Turner colorway. So I was gonna knit this and a pair of booties, right? So I picked this booty pattern. I put in like fingering weight, free, you know, easy booty, blah, blah. Picked one, I'm not gonna tell you which one I picked, but I am gonna tell you that I basically despised it. I It was not written well, I know it was free. And then I was gonna like muddle through. I wasn't even halfway through and was like, I am not doing this. Hmm. So then, cause it just happened today. <laughs> <laughs> so I ripped out half of the booty that I was like meh on and I put in, because I have the yarn, I put in this and the needle that I had at work because I thought, well, I'll just start knitting it, right? So I got the baby vertebrate, which it's fingering weight. I had like a one or a two. So I was gonna do the bait. I think, wait, is it the vertebrae? Might not be the vertebrae. I think it's the. it was the vertebrae. So I got that and then I was like, you know what? Mm, I really don't feel like knitting a sweater because the baby is due in July and that just seemed dumb because I was gonna do a newborn sweater. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why would I knit a baby that's due in July, a newborn sweater? Like, mm -hmm. anyway. So then I'm like, okay, stuffy, right? I'm gonna look up a stuffy. So I found, which where am I? First off, this qualifies for Barbara and Leslie's craft from your stash, knit along slash make along. It's a, it's, what's the hashtag? Hashtag stash cal 2019. You may or may not have heard about. The dress is home. There was a pound sign in front of it. You're old, honey. 
You've all seen that, right? I remember when they called that a pound sign. This is not okay. how this works. This is not how any of this works. They are having a year-long knit-along going on right now. Make-along, you can do anything. You can do crochet, you can do weaving, you can do whatever you want. The only well, rules the are, well, that Barbara said she should have made it a make-along. The hashtag is Cal, but it's a make-along. You can do whatever oh, you want. confusing. Do I'm probably the one that's making it confusing. You can do whatever you want. Hashtag stash cal 2019. And what that means is you had to have the yarn in your stash in 2018 and start the project in 2019. That's all that means. So this right here qualifies for their make along. So be sure and enter that cal if you have stash from last year and start stuff for this year. Mal. Talking, mail, like mail. It's a cow. Mal. <laughs> Shut up. You just said it was a mal. Stop confusing people. It's a mal, but the hashtag is a cow. Come on now, you get it. Speaking of Barbara, that is, Barbara is the Flame and Fiber podcast. Leslie is the Not Quite Enough Yarn podcast. So last time I said that I was not going to enter anything and she messaged me and said, it's totally cool that you don't enter, but I still have something that I want to, want to send you. And I was like, oh, you don't have to do that, but thank you so much. You guys, she sent me, she handmade a lotion bar and it came in this cute little tin. It's one of those like lush where it melt or uh, like a Lolo bar. Then she made, look at this, it has an any. <laughs> Did I show you that? Oh wait. Hmm. <laughs> it has an any. <laughs> it can be used as lippy, and I've used that, you can't even tell. I use it on my cuticles because I have really bad cuticles, but she said it's lippy or cuticle cream. Flame and fiber, the flame part is, she does glass working. So she made me a mushroom stitch marker or progress keeper. Isn't it cute? Look at the bottom. It has little, you know, scalies like a mushroom. And then she made me these guys. There's, let me see if I can hold them up. I should have had a, a if I was better prepared, are any of you surprised that I'm not? I would have had a knitting needle over here. You don't have a knitting needle over here? Well, not over here, no. These are all glass and she made them. Aren't they cool? And she did a video. So instead of a knitting needle, I'm using my spinning wheel oil. But these are hand, not blown, melted, fused. I don't know what you call it. But she has a video where she's at actually doing this and it was super fun to watch. And, and now I know where they came from. Like I know the little like process, how she does it, all that jazz. I want to choke. Ditto. You guys, it's downpour raining here. He gets a shower every single day because our backyard is a swamp. Everyone's backyard is a swamp right now. Here. Where we live, everything is clay. So the water just like sits on top of the yard. I'm skipping ahead to a whip, but I still have FOs. So there was this, right? And then I ripped out the booties and then I was going to do a sweater and was like, meh. And now I decided that I wanted to do a stuffy. So I looked up like toys and I landed on this thing that I'm totally not going to pronounce. Whatever that says. Is that Nubble Chen? Sure. It's in, it's a free pattern and it is in a ton of languages. Like when you click to buy it, it's... There's so many languages that this pattern's in. I'm gonna use this for the body, which is the same as the hat. And then I'm just gonna do that for the head. Scraps in my stash. So I haven't started it yet, but it's next on the, um, it's next on the list. And I'm storing that in my Steel City Stitcher ball sack with the handle canvas. Look at that, isn't it awesome? Where is, uh, what are you your, Googling? Where's your word? Nubble chin. No, what? It's a nubble chin. It's like a wolf of fin. <laughs> where, where, Have you guys where, ever seen Scary see Movie? There's a deleted. There's where's, a the word? where's the word? Give me the word. It's nubble chin. I told you. K-N-U-B-B-L-E-C-H-I-N. 
L E C H E N. I think you might half that up. It might be E L. So what's the definition of the word? Well, I don't know. Well, that's what baby Paul is getting. The baby's name is not Paul. Well, his last name's Paul. His last name's Paul. He, his first name's not Paul. That's called something too. I don't even know if it's a him. Do it is a him. Too? Yeah, he's a boy. It's a him. Yeah, because, you know, Clint and I are besties. Our parents were pregnant together and were 20 days apart. Well, Cade, my brother, just had Cole. And then Christy, Clint's sister, is it's having... A medical miracle. Cade had a baby. Is having their baby in July, and they're both boys. And I said, okay, they're either going to be best friends or they're going to fall in love and get married. Like, that's just, that's just what has to happen. It's the rules. It's the rules. I have two FOs that I only have pictures of. I will put them here. One is called the PP. What? It's not a word. I think you all knitters made it up. I that can't pronounce things. Undefined it. Somebody write it down. Somebody put it in Wickle. 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 Look that up on that there Wickle. <laughs> That's a <laughs> Go look it up on the Google. That's what Olsie. I know any of this works. John, John McCain. I think it was John McCain. I could be wrong, but I think it was John McCain when he was doing the president thing was like something, something, the Google, and everyone made fun of him. I'm Can you follow better. any of this? My face is hot. Bandana bib patterns and tinkle teepees. Yes. Back to that. I will put a picture here. I made PP teepees here again. Those of you who have spawned human offspring know what that is. We wore them as party hats. <laughs> and a couple bibs. I already gave them to Kate and Logan for Cole, though. That's it for the FO parade. So I had quite a few things there, right, right? I'm gonna have so much editing. I'm trying to hurry. Oh wait, I have another FO, I forgot. Look, isn't it cool? It came out balanced. I would say it's a, maybe it's a worsted. I don't know. I, I just let it do what it wanted to do. It is 4.4 ounces and I only got 154 yards, which is what makes me think, is that what I did? Yeah, 154, which is what makes me think uh, that maybe it's a worsted because that's not very many yards. But uniquely yours, I have obviously bought a sheet ton of her fiber because I've been spinning it for a while. And I believe that she is out of business because I can't find anything on her. But this is Superwash Merino. Now the FO parade's done and I'm on to whips. I'm sewing another thing. It's called a baby nest. Again, I'll put it over my co-host's face. So there it is. This is what mine looks like. Uh, the, the, what did I do? The green will be the bottom and the blue will be the top. I am down to, and then I did this kind of cord. Whoops which is just cord I got for macrame. I have like this really badass wall hanging in my bedroom and I still have a crap ton of this left. So now I'm down to the flappy thing and I have to stuff it. So it's almost done. Now, this pattern was a paid for pattern. I think I got it on sale and it came with all these disclaimers, like you're not supposed to leave your baby laying in it and you know, like, don't leave them unattended. And so I'm gonna tell Kate and Logan all that. I'm gonna give them the printout of all the like safety instructions so that nothing bad happens to Cole. There's like all these things that babies can't do now. I put, for, I'm just gonna stand here very awkwardly. I put a post for, it's not really. I put a post up for my dad's birthday and there's a picture of me on Instagram. There's a picture of me as a baby like sleeping next to him in bed. And I knew that all these new age moms were probably having an absolute fit about it because for one, I was sleeping beside him in bed. For two, I was on my stomach. I don't think you're allowed to sleep on your stomach. There's like all these rules now. But hey, guess what? I drank out of a garden hose and I'm so alive. Tell me, this kind of crazy is fun, right? <laughs> okay, what's next? Uh, I don't know. Nubble, 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 you did the doll. Lullaby Line Baby Nest? Oh, no. it's the Lullaby Line Baby Nest by Peekaboo Peek Patterns. Also, the PPTPs were Peekaboo. And I can't scarf? remember. Did you talk no, about the, the scarf at all? 
the, the, the plaid, uh, the PPTP things, the bandana bib pattern. Yeah, the ban the bandana bib pattern. Well, I put a picture up. Okay. Uh, the tinkle TP. I can't remember if it was a paid for. The PPTPs are free. The bibs. Tinkle, tinkle TP. Tinkle TP. Not PPTP. The PPTPs. I think fun. I think most people call them PPTPs. If you Google PPTPs, it comes up. What happens if you Google? I'm not Googling anything. Anyway. <laughs> okay. The bandana bibs, though. I can't remember if I paid for those or not. If I did, it was like one or two dollars. It wasn't anything like big, but that's by, let me see what that one is. You know, I'll, I'll link all the stuff. Oh, what are we looking for, the PPTVs? No, the bandana bib pattern. Apple Green Cottage is. Dot com. You should talk about your scrap fabric. Oh, the, the nest was scrap fabric. What nest? The baby nest oh, the thing. Oh, giant bib. Yeah, I just used uh, fabric out of my stat, like. What would Squirrel Pie Productions think about that? Oh, see, this is why Dan has my notes. Hey, you guys, if you're spinning anything, Tommy from Squirrel Pie Productions is having a fiber along, and you should hashtag it. Now, I is hashtag that a this. Or a make along? It's a spin along, a fiber along. Hashtag fiber along 2019. I'm probably going to lose so many subscribers over this. <laughs> People are going to be like, I can't follow that chick. She is all over the place. Which I am. I'm blaming Dan. She always does. You have me out of, my, out of my realm. Or I could blame the sewing. It's very weird that I have so much sewing, right? What's next? Souse, souse. Susu, my susu. Oh, you guys. My susu. I am so close to being finished with it, and I continue to hate it. What the hell? I'm on Sleeve Island on not one, but two sweaters for one, which I did not mark the last time you guys saw the, I feel like it's been so long since I've recorded that I, I don't even, I don't even know what's happening. See, I'm hot too. So. Why is it so hot in here? It's not hot in here. She's panting. I'm like all red face. You're glowing. I'm glowing. It happens, not all the time, but it does. Okay, peeps. Actually, I wonder if I could put it on without totally messing stuff up. Here's the thing, got the front done. I joined and I started the sleeve. Look at there, it's a sleeve. The way you do it, and I have my clips in, is you knit the sleeves flat and then you sew up the side seams and I'll be done. There's this weirdo, which this is, I wonder if this is the secret sauce, but you do like this thing and this will go around the back, but I'm waiting to attach it until after. Let me is see. Is that if... cording or did you knit it? Is it what? No, I knit it. Cording, is that what you said? Yeah, that little thing with five pens on it. That you blah, 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 blah. Yeah, no, I knit it. Use the imagination, people. So the seam, the side seams, of course, are not done. Okay. What's that? Just stitch mark. I can take the stitch markers out now that I'm done. I just haven't done it yet. I was, I was um, putting a stitch marker in or a progress keeper for every repeat, so I knew. Okay. I don't know. If you can see it, this is the Plucky Knitter yarn in the deep dish colorway. It is wool and it's wool and a little bit of silk. Fingering weight held double, it calls for a DK. If you look, it's not been blocked, so you know, use your imagination there. If you look at the hashtag of this sweater or the project pages, which I did not do, obviously, before I knit this sweater, I love the model sweater. There are some other projects that I'm not in love with, and I think a lot of it has to do with gauge. So if you guys want to knit this sweater, just be very aware of that. This part is where that gauge comes into play. I think mine is okay if I block it out that way and maybe it will look okay. 
I don't know. I we'll see. But some of them, this is like way up here, and this is like way down here. Like they have a big, and I wish that this was shorter. I. You guys, this sweater. I wish I had the digits. I would call her. <laughs> Here's the thing about the sweater that concerns me. It weighs like 52 pounds. 52? It's so... Well, I mean, so... it's like 50 right now, but when the sleeves are done, it'll be a full 52 pounds. It's the humidity in the air, I bet. It's so heavy. I feel like... I'm scared to wash it because it's going to get bigger and I don't want it to get bigger. I think I'm gonna like it. Maybe it'll be like a big cozy, I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully we'll all see one day that sweater be finished. Or burnt. No, I, dude, I have put so much time and energy into, dude, and the sleeve messed me up. The sleeve, this, you know, like that thing has done, like it has fought me tooth and nail the entire way. So I'm sick of talking about the Susu. I am still knitting it. Maybe one day it will be finished and you'll actually see me wearing it. Now, here's the thing about the Susu that I'm very excited about. And not just about the Susu, but also about the Ives, which is my next whip. Those two sweaters will one day be worn over my hinterland dress, which has not been made yet to be continued. So next is my Ives sweater. My Ives sweater, Ives, is a pattern by Jared Flood. You've been watching me knit this. The thing about this sweater is it's a high-low as well, except it is knit this away instead of this away. I have this much sleeve done. So all I have left on this, this is supposed to be like 10 or 10 and a half inches of ribbing. Then I'll have this other one to do. I have the neck to do, and I have the band at the bottom to do. Uh, the reason that this is taking so long is it's a fingering weight yarn on small-ish needles, size threes. But I'm just on a two by two rib, so it's sort of mindless knitting right now, which is nice. It's really the only thing that I have that's mindless knitting. Everything else kind of has taken some brain power right now. The only thing that's bad about mindless knitting on a sweater is that you have a sweater. Brooklyn Tweed. Thank you, my humble assistant. This yarn is Brooklyn Tweed Loft. It's sheepy wonderful goodness. And the cool thing about Loft is it is not super wash and you can spit splice it. So there are no ends to weave in. I'm glad you brought it up. I'm glad I put that in my notes because I forgot you guys haven't seen this, I don't think, since I've seen this. Have you guys seen this since I've seen this? Or was it just two pieces the last time? This might've been two pieces the last time, what? So you seam it, there's an exposed seam. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, let me just tell ya, except for down the sides, it's not exposed. Is this the one you like suck down? Suck down. Like you ran the yarn all the way through it and went thunk and it went <laughs> Yeah, a mattress stitch. You know how you can put the mattress stitch in and then pull it and it like zips up and it's awesome. I used scrap yarn, like a black, and I don't even think you can see it. I used a gray, yeah, you can't see it. I used another yarn because, and somebody can tell me if they disagree, but Brooklyn Tweed is so sheepy that you can pull it apart very easy. So... For seaming and pulling it through a seam, it it's just not strong enough to hold up. I mean, if you wanted to be really careful, maybe. I'm a rammy tack, as Grandma Nato would say. A what? A rammy tack. Like thumb tack? Like like ramrodding around. She called it a tack? she called it a rammy tack. So I just used a scrap yarn that I had in a similar color to sew up the seams. I just felt like it would give the seams more integrity. Is that the word? I don't know. You guys tell me what you think. Have you ever knit with Brooklyn Tweed Loft? And would you seam with a woolen, maybe not Brooklyn Tweed Loft, but would you ever seam with a woolen spun yarn? Yeah. I just knew better 
because I'm a Rammy tag. I could see myself getting like, especially mattress stitch. Like I see, my, I could see myself getting so far and then it snapping and me being pissed off. So I just kind of headed it off at the pass. What's next? Spending other people's money. Hmm? Enabling. <laughs> I get it. Some people hate enabling because they have no willpower, but I have willpower. So I'm sorry if enabling bothers you, but this enabling probably won't bother most people because what is it? Oh, it's fabric, right? Tiger plant fold floral shadow linen fabric. So back up, you know, I said that I wanted my eyes. Folk. Folk, not fold. That's just my typing. <laughs> right. So, you know how I said my Ive sweater and my Susu is hopefully to go over my hinterland dress. This is the hinterland dress and I bought fabric for it. I am going to make two. It is also by So Liberated because I'm a total fangirl slash not scary stalker. Is that a thing? <laughs> You're a fun stalker. Anyway, even crazy. though Dan makes fun of me for looking Amish, I don't think that I look Mennonite. Amish. I like, well, whatever, Mennonite. I'm, I like it, so <laughs> piss off. This dress, you guys, is crazy with options. You can do sleeveless, you can do cap sleeves, you can do three-quarter sleeves, you can do short, you can do mid, you can do long. You can do no button placket, a button placket, a full frontal button placket. Like there are so many options with this. The entire reason that I wanted to make this hinterland dress is because I wanna make the Nordiska and I want that look and I'll put a picture here. That is the hinterland dress-ish, I think. At least it's pretty damn close. If it isn't the hinterland dress, it's pretty close to the hinterland dress. So I would have three sweaters to wear over top of these dresses right out of the gate. Now, that being said, I think I am going to go sleeveless and no button placket. But famous last words, I haven't even started yet. I am going to do a muslin, for the bodice, now that I have made two metamorphic dresses, I'm thinking that because it's by the same designer, the sizing should still be the same. So I'm still going to go with the 12. But just in case I do want to do the bodice of the hinterland to make sure for fitting, I'm going to do like the mid or shorter, whatever the length is in the Nordiska sweater pattern, which I want to say that's by Caitlin Hunter. If I'm wrong, I'll put it down here, but I think the Nordiska is by Caitlin Hunter. It's on, it's on the horizon. I mean, I already have two sweaters going and sleeve islands on two sweaters. I'm going to, it's going to take me forever, but I'm going to have like a brand new wardrobe come winter, yo. Here's the two fabrics that I purchased to make my hinterlands. I purchased these both off fabric.com. They are washed and ironed. I have a process. One day I will wash and iron them. One day I will cut out the pieces and another day I would sew. So my fabric will be ready to go. This is the first one. Wait, where am I here? Okay, people. Now, it's called, what's it called? Tiger? Tiger. Tiger plant Wait. folk. Are there tigers and plants? Um. I don't know, do you guys think those are tigers or sheep? And it's like sheep heads with their bodies detached. That's what I'm going with. <laughs> How cool would this be? With my Susu or my Ives sweater over it? Like this is gonna be badass, people. And my clogs, ugh, I cannot wait for this outfit. So that's the first one. Then I have also found out because of my metamorphic dress, the gray layer, I love Love, love, a slubby linen. So I had to get a slubby linen. Kaufman Brussels washer linen blend yarn dye red rock. This is, it's called red rock. That, that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good thing. Now I got this color to pull out the rust in the plucky knitter deep dish color way. There's, lot. there's rust speckles. Well, okay. And here's the other thing. It's like, a whole lot. For my for my size, you it calls for parachutes worth? Four yards. Well, I might make a vest out of it. For my 
Then so you, you could make a tent out of the material you have here. Okay. I mean, really, a ditto intermission. No, but once you start cutting the fabric, like you have to cut on the fold and stuff. I did just watch, oh, dang it. I'm gonna put her name down here. New podcaster. I feel like this is the Tara episode. Tara's getting a lot of shout outs this episode because she's really into sewing and she's like this wealth of knowledge and I'm really annoying and always like drink at the wealth of knowledge and she tells me all the cool things. And she pointed out this chick's podcast and she sews a bunch of stuff. And I think she was the one, I forget her name, I apologize, but I'm subscribed to her and you should go watch her. I think she said that you can get away with a lot less yardage than the pattern calls for. My size calls for four yards, so that's what I bought. Now, if it doesn't take that much, that's fine with me because I love this fabric and I will make altar mats, linen napkins, um, I will make things. I might, I, if I can get a forager out of this, I, I'll do it, like for my tarot cards. Like, I don't... Oh, a witch altar. I was thinking like a church altar. No, but I'm not a witch. I mean, witches are cool. I like that. I just don't have that kind of dedication. What are you going to do with a linen napkin? Use it. Maybe we had chicken nuggets on paper plates. We don't use linen napkins. Don't tell people that. <laughs> we did. We totally had chicken nuggets and tater tots for dinner. On paper plates. And tequila for dessert. So that's my fabric. For the hinterlands, those will be future projects. I did receive a couple gifts, which I'm always so like thankful for and squeal like a little kid when I get them. You guys, I got not one, but two tarot decks since the last time I saw you. And I cannot wait to show them to you. Okay, first, my girl Z, Z, your username always escapes me. I'll put it down here. I just call her Z. I've talked about Z before. She is out, I wanna say in the LA area. She has a podcast. You guys need to go check her out. She's a crocheter, but she got a hold of me and said, hey, I used to collect tarot stuff. I'm trying to get rid of stuff. I have this deck, would you want it? I'm like, yes, any deck that makes its way to me in the universe, there must be a reason, right? This is the artist, and this is the box. This deck is 80s-tastic. 80s-tastic. Let me just show you a couple of the cards. It reminds me of, like, 80s David Bowie. A little bit. And you guys know how much I love David Bowie. First off, they're huge. That is, that is very large for... Like, you haven't seen this deck yet, but there's the, the card size comparison. So these are almost impossible to shuffle unless you shuffle them this way. There are lots of boobies in this deck. Hmm. Look at that. Well, you don't need to take the whole thing. Well, I want to see them all. I didn't say there were boobies on every card. You said so there were a lot. There are a lot. There are a lot of boobies in this deck. The Magus, which would be the magician. Look at his eyebrows. The art is really cool. Temperance, look at that. Balance. These are the to be tempered. Don't care about tarot, right? Well, I don't know. They might not care about tarot. But I, I wanted to show you the art. Then my next deck was a gift from Zira. Zira has a podcast. Ah, uh, I was right. Lady of the Dark. Fiber Arts. Love of the Dark. Oh, I was wrong. Love of the Dark. <laughs> well, I was kind of thinking like, at first I was like Lady of the Night. And I'm like, definitely not. That's definitely not it. <laughs> it's that one. That's Zira. She is super awesome. And if she didn't live on the other side of the continent, we would be besties. I just know it. Where she live? Oregon, I think. Oh, somewhere, I think Oregon, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's o over yonder. There's a trail that goes there, isn't there? Where all the freaking cool people live. I feel like my people are up in that corner of the world. Oh, we'll get you a train ticket. Zira watched my tarot episode, and she knows that I have a love. And sorry if you're not into tarot. 
Too bad. Yeah, I, I'm talking about it. We're almost to the end, so if you're like, peace out, bye, I get it. Love you. She knows from my tarot episode that I love Pamela Coleman Smith. Pamela Coleman Smith, for those of you who did not watch the tarot video, is the original artist to sort of the original tarot deck when you think about tarot. She's often forgotten about because everyone thinks of the men. Like when you hear Rider Waite, a Rider Waite deck, uh, Rider was the publisher and Waite was the guy who made the definition, for lack of a better word, of the cards or the meaning of the cards. Well, it's really the Rider Waite Smith deck and Smith is for Pamela Coleman Smith, who was the artist on the cards. So when you see standard tarot art, am I losing you, Dan? Okay, so when you think of a standard, the standard tarot artwork, like this is the Hermit, which you might think, Led Zeppelin, that's actually a tarot card. This is Pamela Coleman Smith's art. They did a commemorative deck and that's what this is. This is the original, like the back of the cards look like this. It comes in this badass box. Look at this. I mean, that's like substantial. No! I'm throwing the cards everywhere. So the reason that it's Pamela Coleman Smith commemorative, you get this huge book with it, which is the book that comes with the standard, the standard tarot deck. You also get postcards of her artwork that are not tarot. These are just, she was an artist outside of doing the art for the tarot deck. So it's super cool and the postcards have that old timey postcard look on the back. So these are not tarot cards, although that I think could totally be a lover's card, the lover's card. That's a tarot card, that's the Empress, just in postcard form. But the rest of these are not. Then this is her, and that is a very common picture. It's what most everyone knows her to look like. And then I got larger prints of the art. I, you guys, I was so freaking excited when I opened this, like tears were in my eyes. I was at work. I couldn't play with it. Like I wanted to read all the things and check out all the artwork. Then you also get a book of of all about Pamela and her art and her story and where her art is. And oh, she was an artist in the early 1900s. Even if you're not into tarot, there is an art to it that is really spectacular. Um, a lot of the collectors, that's why they collect them. So, some people don't even read with a lot of the decks they collect. They're just really into the art on the card. So Zira, thank you so much. I have been loving it. It's the one that's that's on my altar always. This is the 10 of cups. That is the end of a cycle. Cups are emotion and that is as good as it gets. Happy, happy, life is good. So that's a good one to be right there. So thank you so, so much. I, ugh. These cards are amazing. And then the deck that Z gave me, I just stare at the cards and I get flooded with, like the readings are great because I get so much from the artwork on those cards. So it's just really, really cool. And thank you guys so much for thinking of me. And I have so many great decks and I use them for different things, like different you feel different ways and you go for different decks. So it is nice to have a variety. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. Okay, almost done. I knew this was gonna be a long episode when we started. First off, I've not forgotten about the giveaways. They are just gonna kind of be open until they're not open. I'll let you know. You'll always- Is, is that the pound sign show Chevy stuff? Yes, we have two giveaways going on right now. One of them is just a giveaway and one of them is a make along. The first one is hashtag show Chevy stuff. And that is, I wanna see a picture of your stash, your craft room, your stuff room, your uh, 
corner where you craft any any crafty goodness if you don't have a craft room like anything crafty that you want to show me and you can if you put it on instagram hashtag it show chevy stuff and there is also i think i i didn't rewatch my episode when i talked about it but um it does not surprise me that people were confused because you know like i'm confusing Anyway, you can enter by putting a picture on Instagram and hashtagging it show Chevy stuff or there is a thread in my Ravelry group which will also be linked down below and you can post a picture there if you do not have Instagram. Um, if you aren't on Ravelry and don't have Instagram, I'm sorry. That's just how that's just that's how you got to do it. The other giveaway is actually a make along and it is. I don't think of any pictures. What? They could mail you pictures. Yes. You could mail me pictures. If you don't have Ravelry, and if you don't have Instagram, feel free to snail mail me pictures if you feel more comfortable with that. You can send it to Chevy Rel at P.O. Box 62, New Haven, Indiana, 46774. I'll put it in the description box below. I love snail mail. So if Post that's... Cards. So if that's your flavor, have at it. We are also having another giveaway, which is actually a make along and I forget my own hashtag <laughs> because I'm a slacker. Dude, I've been busy if a baby came and I have all this like baby here. knitting. I didn't even put it in there. I know. Okay, I'll put it down here. What that make along is, is you have to make something out of a book because we get all of our patterns off Ravelry so often because it's so easy to do. And we have all these books on our bookshelves and I never consult them, so. Oh, you have to make a pattern that came from a dead, not, as you meant, like make something out of a book, like glue all the pages together and cut the middle of it out so you can hide a gun in it. Not make something out of a book, make something out of a book. You need to pick a pattern out of a book. From a book. That's in your library Sheldon. Like, don't take it out of the book. Leave the page in the book. Yes. And just make the thing. Don't deface your book. I mean, you can. If you want to tear it out, maybe that's easier. Y'all get y'all on my level, right? I'm leaving. <laughs> We're almost done. Chill out. So, yes, there is a Ravelry thread. If you're making something out of a book already or if you have a library and you are looking for a new cast on, do that. We'll do like till the end of summer. I have looked at my books, but I have not found anything that I'm in love with to make. But I need to sit down. I just did it like really willy nilly the other day. I need to actually take the time and pick out a pattern. So no rush on that. But take a ganda at your books. There is a chatter thread if y'all want to talk about it in the Ravelry group. Mm. But there is also... Show us what you store in your books. Do you have a secret book? Darl has one. A secret book? A book like where you open it, it and there's a hole it, yeah. in it? Darl has one. Darl is Dan's dad. Now you all know that Darl has a secret book. So you could rob him to find out what he has in his secret book. I can tell you. It's empty. <laughs> Okay, last but not least, new podcast alert. You need to go there and check her out. My girl, Tanya. Her podcast is From Tanya to You, U-E-W-E. -E. Ah. Ah. She just started. She has two episodes. You guys all know my like OCD thing where I have to watch my cue in order. So I've only watched the first episode. I haven't watched the second episode yet. But her first episode was great. If you guys like energy like my energy like high laughy fun awake energy tanya's your girl if you like being talked to like it's a librarian maybe not so much but i'm guessing if you like that you probably haven't lasted this long either <laughs> you're not still here <laughs> but tanya is awesome go check out her new podcast she's a lot of fun if you are still here I commend you, kind <laughs> sir, because I can't believe we're still here. We've been here so long, I'm hungry. I'm not even gonna say like and subscribe. Well, you can like it. I'm not even gonna say subscribe because if you're still here, you have to be subscribed because <laughs> I don't know why, who else would be here with this 
hot mess. So do all the ringy dingy shit that you're supposed to do on YouTube and all that happy horse shit. And until next time, we will catch you on the flip side. Cheers. Aww. Are you all out of milk? <laughs>